everybody welcome back to Good Ale Farm. Uh, this is really kind of uh, part two of a video um, that I'm doing today. Uh, part one was just an introduction that I'm having a problem with my pool filter. So here I'm actually going to dive into it and try to fix it. Um, it's an IntelliFlow by Pentair, three horse uh, with a three and a half horse uh, turbo. Uh, stopped working, not quite sure what the deal is I think it's the uh, what's called the drive it's a control panel if you will something with electronics I believe mechanically it's fine so I'm gonna jump into it and uh, hopefully fix it not having big hopes but hey we'll see thanks for tuning in okay so I took the drive assembly off and you can see the drive assembly sits into this um, kind of coupling or harness end here. That's where all the, uh, I guess, electronics and messaging would go. I'll clean that off later with a, a swab. Uh, these rubber kind of gr grommets are more for, um, I guess, insulating properties and cushion. This one's a little burnt out, so maybe I'll put a rubber washer or something on that. All right, so let's go take a look at the, uh, the unit I pulled off. Tell you, the tailgate of a pickup truck is perfect workbench. All right, so here's the deal. You have this drive assembly, which is basically two parts. The first part up top here is held on by these four screws. And when you pull the top off, what you then are left with is, call it a base assembly. And this base assembly goes on to the part that I just showed earlier with the uh, orange rubber grommets and these three screws one two and three secure this into basically the pump itself so power comes in I'm gonna take a look at these to see if they're all good to go look at this uh, coupling here uh, this is a messenger coupling so that if you had an auxiliary uh, chlorine or an auxiliary um, salt water thing you'd, you'd plug it in here and get that messaging I don't have that so I just leave that capped off and then here's where the drive assembly plugs in so you see the drive assembly here you know the underside is that plug so uh, let's take a look at all of these and see if we see any corrosion all right so uh, I checked these terminals they're nice and tight uh, I'm not going to disturb them they seem fine uh, but upon inspection, I did see the insulation of this wire is split. I'll put electrical tape on that. It doesn't look like it's too much of a problem. I mean, moisture could have gotten in there, but I don't think that would have been the issue. But as you see something like that, you want to correct it. So um, let's move on. All right, for the next step, I'm going to take this panel... Um, I guess panel frame off of the keypad and I believe this rubber membrane can be peeled off and there'll be contact points underneath that so we'll do that um, I believe these uh, what do they call these torque screws torque tension screws but it's the uh, you know a, a six point head type of uh, adapter that you put on so uh, I have my handy dandy selection here. This has been a godsend over the years. I mean, like every type of attachment, drill bit, etc. Um, so, anyway, I got ready to go there and we're going to pull that off. All right, with the frame off and upon further inspection, I can see this start and stop button is. Uh, looks kind of cracked and I'm wondering if moisture got into that and was causing part of the problem so let me gently peel this rubber uh, membrane off see what's underneath look to see at the contacts see if anything looks uh, out of ordinary or any foreign uh, anything foreign let's check it out all right so this uh, rubber membrane is put on almost with a very thin double-faced tape 
So as you pull it apart, you want to be very careful. And what I'm going to do is a combination of putty knife and some uh, flat edge. I'll use two hands, one slowly getting and the other one kind of shimmying it underneath to try to break it loose because this, this rubber is very thin too and you know you don't want to rip that. So all right let me perform some surgery on this. Okay so the putty knife and uh, flat edge really didn't work. Um, use both hands and just go god you know eighth of an inch at a time around i did have one casualty right here so uh, i haven't figured out when the time comes to put this back how to do it i could get double face tape maybe some glue but uh i'll cross that bridge when i get to it so now i'm going to do the final uh extraction of this and we'll see what's underneath all right so looking at that that problem area first you know, it looks like it's just now a surface crack because as I go underneath, everything still looks intact and the buttons look in pretty good shape. So instead of yanking the whole thing off, I think I'm going to do it in sections. So far, everything looks good here. I don't see any corrosion, any uh, infiltration. So I'll gently put this back and uh, move on to the other sections. Okay. I changed my mind. Um, I went far enough to understand that this is in pretty good shape and pulling it off isn't really going to show me anything different. So I'm going to move on and check all the different connection points, the terminals, like, you know, take this one off to see underneath it. I mean, it might be just a bad motherboard somewhere in here. Maybe, maybe not. You know, sometimes, uh, and this is just optimism talking. Sometimes when you take something apart and it's off for a long period of time and then you put it back together, things actually work out. It's almost like resets itself. I'm optimistic, but I'm not counting on that. Okay, so I pulled that guy out and everything looks really nice and clean. But uh, I have the alcohol and the swab, so I'm just going to uh, give, it, give all these terminals the once over. Uh, you know, to whatever extent these inanimate electronic objects have a spirit, you know, me giving them a little bit of a TLC and maybe a bath, maybe they'll shine, uh, shine, shine likely on me and uh, work when I put it all together. All right, let me uh, get the swabs out and uh, go to town. All right, I cleaned all the terminals that I could uh, get my hands on. I did loosen these up, wiggle the wires around, and then crimp them back down again. Uh, I'm gonna put electrical tape on this. I'm pulling this plug apart. Uh, everything looks fine. There's you know, a spider nest in there, but I don't think that had anything to do with it. So, you know, just as a pause, I must have probably a hundred packages of electric tape open. I go to look for one, can't find it anywhere. Got to open up 101st. All right, so let me get that going and uh, tape things up before I give it the one more once over. Okay, I got the cord uh, retaped, insulated, put it back together. Everything looked fine there. Cleaned it up a little bit, cleaned the underside of this. Uh, now I'm going to take the electric tape and just frame the outside of this rubber membrane because I lifted it up and you know it's it's not as strong as it once was so I'll do that I kind of drape it over the sides a little bit and uh, I think I'm ready to put it back on so uh, if you're watching cross your fingers okay one more thing I want to check is I mentioned the motherboard which has to be in here so I need to separate these two pieces here. I think the way you do it is just with some big, uh, or actually small pry bars, but big for big for this mechanism. I'll use a screwdriver, put it in and, and twist it and separate it. And again, look for anything that uh, looks out of the ordinary. All right, let's see what we can do here. Okay, for those of you doing this at home, yes, you pry it all the way apart. 
However, the ground screw actually goes all the way through and attaches to this bottom piece. So make sure you take that out and then from there the whole thing should be able to come out. All right, like I said, you look for things that don't belong. So far, so far, so far, so far. Oh, snap. Look at that. Looks like it got burnt out. And it's coming from the power, which looks like the white here. So something got fried. Um, my guess is this thing is toast. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll swap it down to see if it uh, can do anything. But just, man, just taking a look at that. That don't look good. Oh, boy. All right. Let me uh, do a little further inspection, clean it up, and uh, put it back together. All right. I put it all back together and put a bead of electrical tape around that seam. I think it naturally seals with the heat, but... Now that we're out of summer, I figure the electrical tape wouldn't hurt. But good chance this won't work anyway, but uh, in case it does, we're good to go. Okay, we're going back into the belly. You gonna watch us? All right, we're going back into the belly of the beast. There's a bad boy there. Let me uh, put it back on and see what we got. All right, we got the uh, the main body fastened down, and, and again, uh, it's these three screws. One, two, three, they're the longer ones. And then these, uh, the four in the corner are the, the four that hold, you know, where I had the, uh, the motherboard exposed. So the bottom to the top here are held on by these, these four here. So uh, we got that, uh, so now I'm gonna take the pad it has a, a tail with a plug. Uh, plug it in here. Um, screw it in. And get ready to power it up. Alright my friends. We're all hooked up there. Now when I'm doing work. There's some things I'll take a risk on. And kind of play with a little bit. But 220 volts. Is not one of them. So I'm going to make sure the breaker is off in the garage. With the breaker off, I'll plug this in. Then I'll go back and put the breaker on. Breaker, breaker. Here we go. All right, breaker's off. Okay, we're going to get the plug. For those of you who weren't familiar with a 220 volt plug, the plug is a little bit different. And you'll notice this one prong that's shaped like an L or it has a bend in it. Well, that's the same with the outlet. There's an outlet that has that particular bend. So when you put it in, you want to make sure it goes in the right way. And then you notice these slots. So you put it in and you turn it. Uh, so let me get that in. We got the slot up top. Let me get the plug, put that in. Okay, plug is in. Everything's off because there's no power because of the breaker. Let me put the breaker on and uh, we'll come over here. All right, now when I go to put the breaker back on, if it automatically trips, that means we've got a problem. Okay, it didn't trip. So let's go take a look to see what the filter is doing. All right, I gotta put it back on though. Hey, this is a good sign so far. Look at that, I got no alarm. If I hit the start button and this thing starts, uh, the prayers are going to be flying tonight. Let's see. Priming? You got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. Uh, music. Music. It's working. All right, my friends. It has since been working now for about a couple minutes or so. I am very surprised and pleased, obviously. So we're just gonna shut this door, let it run for a little bit. Lacey, do you see that? It's working. It's amazing.
All right, let's go take a look at the pool, see what's going on in there. Obviously, the uh, filter's uh, doing its job. Look at all these leaves. Man, in the course of one week, the litter and debris that goes into a pool is ridiculous. I say one week, meaning from basically summer to fall. You know, you, you could go a whole week in the summer and nothing really kind of goes in the pool. As soon as fall comes, one day, you know, you get a few of this stuff. All right, let's go check that filter back out again and uh, round this out. All right, the pool's been running for a good 20 minutes, half hour now. I think I'm out of the woods, at least for this season. You know, um, this is a good example and something that I, I try to do all the time is before you declare something broken and you need to get a new one, just take a moment and take a look at it. Open up, you know, obviously unplug it and you want to be safe and everything. But uh, whether it be your car, your dishwasher, anything, just put your eyes on it. Look at things that don't look right. Clean areas that look dirty. Tighten parts that you think got loose. Um, sometimes it's, it's a simple fix. And like, like this here, I don't know exactly what it was that fixed it. But by doing a combination of cleaning tightening, putting it back together, having it unplugged for a period of time. It worked. So hopefully that gives you some, uh, I don't know, confidence or it gives you a sense of, you know what, I'm going to give the old college try before I write something off. So anyway, it worked for me this time. doesn't work all the time, but it's worth a try. Wow, everybody. I, I'm just so happy. Probably, you know, happy not only because I got it running, but I don't have to spend any money. Man, that, that's, I love that. Anyway, hey, thanks for tuning in. And uh, if you're watching this because you have one of these pumps and, and filters and uh, control panels, hopefully this helped and gave you a little bit of uh, tips to help yours if it's broken. So until next time, have a great day. Mm -hmm.